until you go back all that awful road. So we're really scared actually. <laughs> We are now going to a motor rental company and see if we can rent some bikes to do a loop here. We're gonna go for some bigger bikes now because Thailand is more used to have bigger bikes. And we also wanna rent something that we might wanna buy back home because we don't have any bikes yet. So we're gonna find out what are the options. The only thing is that it also gets a little bit more expensive. Bit of a bummer, they only have uh, these two available, the rest is all fully booked. Shop number two. Let's see what I have here. They have two Honda CB500X coming back tomorrow, but they weren't sure if they need any repairs or anything, so uh, it's still a little bit uncertain. Booked, booked, booked. Another one. We are wondering what you have available for renting. Do you have like the C500 or yes, the V-Strong even? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank we'll you. see you tomorrow morning. We are now at the entrance of the Doi Inuchon National Park or something like that, where we have to pay an entrance fee. Um, the first hour of driving, I was getting used to bike, of course, it's very big and it's very enormous and it's also very new driving in the upside of the road. We are about to go into the mountains, so that's what I'm really looking forward to and then really try these bikes out, so let's continue. We have just reached the highest point of Thailand, 2575.60 meters. So that's quite high and quite cold, I can tell you. And look what a beautiful clouds we can see. After a long day we arrive in Mae Cham. We stayed at Mae Cham Resort in these cute houses. A nice place to stay for the night. Oh that's cozy. <laughs> Alright so another day. We had a little bit of stress yesterday because my laptop was soaked in water by a leaking water bottle. So that was not that fun. So now it's our second day. It looks a little bit dark out there where we're going to so I hope it's not too much rain. So let's go.
So to summarize yesterday and today, the beginning was a bit boring. I mean, it was like one hour driving outside of out, out of the city. But day after we arrived in the mountains and that was really nice. The roads were really good uh, con condition wise. I mean, in Laos and Vietnam, we were used to having potholes every now and then. But here that is less frequent. It sometimes happens, but rarely. Uh, and today was also very nice. I mean, the sun came out through the uh, fog we had in the morning and thereafter it was just enjoying the ride. From Mae Cham, we drove to Mae Sarang, a quite large town but still nice. So this is our room for tonight, 450 baht, that's not that bad of course. We still had some energy left and decided to go to Doi Pui Ko Viewpoint for a nice sunset. Little did we research and just follow the Google Maps, we didn't know what to come. The road first became narrow and fun, but thereafter? At first we thought maybe it's a little bit of construction, because thereafter the road improved a bit and we thought, well that is fine. They are building the road. But quite soon it became a dirt track again. When we looked on Google Maps again, we thought maybe we took a non-touristy dirt road, we will just have to keep going and when we're going to return, we will be just fine. What a road. So we have a little bit of the issue that we thought there was a better way when we came up here. That's why we continued. Apparently there is no better way. So we have to continue go back all that awful road. So there was no touristy road at all. We quickly took a good look before we had to prepare ourselves to go back down again on the same road before sunset. Enjoy the footage while I play some nice music and pretend everything is going according to schedule. <laughs> At least now I can a little bit enjoy the sunset. Now I'm a little bit relieved. Because <laughs> damn, that was a very hard road. If you have a dirt bike, definitely recommend it. Go this route, you will enjoy it the most of it. And uh, I think it's a little bit medium uh, size of experience you need for this. But if you're on a normal bike, don't go here. They are constructing a road though. So maybe in a year or something, they have paved everything. Yeah. That was a nice uh, lookout we went to. We didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> so let's continue with the last piece. We 
has made it. We did it. Let's not do that again. Let's not do that again. <laughs> Let's not do that again. On day 3 I started to form my opinion about Thailand and its motorcycle touring capabilities, compared to Vietnam and Laos. Coming from Vietnam, where the roads are pretty much good but do have a lot of gravel in the corners and where you don't really need a big bike like this, you had the best country for enjoying beautiful sceneries. So scenery rise, Vietnam is the number one country to go to in Hajang in the north. When we moved over to Laos, the roads were terrible. Potholes, gravel and a lot of unpaved roads on the right. Definitely a country which is home to a lot of awesome sceneries as well, but not as good as Vietnam. Laos though, I liked more for trying out off-road bike. Like I said, you didn't even have to go on a special track to try some off-road driving, you will encounter it anyways. Now Thailand is the number one place to go to for very good roads. A bigger bike is not entirely necessary, but is a bit more fun for the extra acceleration. On this loop though, we had and will have some nice sceneries, but not as much as in the other two countries. So, you basically will enjoy the country the best for its awesome roads. That is something that is hard to show you though, as you have to feel it. If you are a motorcyclist, you know what I'm talking about. If not, just know that every corner you go into, you try to find the right balance between speed and leaning angle into the corner. Still in a safe manner though. It's not a racetrack so you probably notice I mostly try to not cut the corners off when I'm going to the right. It's only the third day on these bikes, while we're getting more comfortable every day, we are still a bit precautious. The special thing about day 3 is that we are aiming to go to Bandrak Thai, all the way in the north of Thailand, close to the Myanmar border. Our sleeping location is a little bit below it though, so we will check the town out tomorrow morning. But today we already had some really nice roads going up with a lot of tight corners. So we are now at this lake and apparently it attracts a lot of tourists. You can get a little bamboo boat there. Really like vans are coming and going on this place. So actually we wanted to go to Ban Rak Thai, but we didn't make it to Ban Rak Thai because we looked on booking.com just for a place in Ban Rak Thai and it appears to be too much to the south actually. Oh look up. This one? Okay, thank you. <laughs> See. This is our room. It even has two beds. No air conditioning of course. So the light works. And the bathroom. That looks pretty good. Wow. That's a sophisticated heating system. It's like the most modern I have seen so far. Say goodbye to this cute little house on to Ban Rak Thai. Cute little town, Ban Rak Thai, literally meaning in Thai, loving village, is settled by the KMT. They, those are the naturalist fighters of the human region in China. And after the Chinese communists took 
uh, took power in 1949. They just settled here and kind of escaped actually China. So there is like a 1000 population, half Chinese, half Thai. And that's why you can actually speak both languages here and all the signs are also in Chinese and in Thai. So yeah, looks really nice. For our next destination on our amazing journey, we have a well-known place, Pai. Pai is one of those cute little towns where you can get stuck for a while. The vibe is really nice here. So this is our hostel. Looks very nice. And the bathroom. New showers. Bathtub. Toilet. So yeah, those renovations are very well done. Around Pai you can go to a viewpoint, which isn't that great actually. The Pai Canyon though is really recommended during sunset. We did it during the day and it was still nice. You can also go to a hot spring, make sure you get a good scooter because some had trouble making it up on the hills. But in Pai itself you can just relax, enjoy the chill vibe, eat some street food or keep updated on local events to make sure you don't miss out on a fire show for example. <laughs> The next day we started on the last leg of our journey, back to Chiang Mai. Despite the fact that weather forecasts are frequently wrong, it rained as expected today. And when it's raining, the roads are very slippery in Thailand, so you have to drive very carefully. We were sad to have to return our bikes as they were really good to ride. Truly an amazing route you can take when you are in North Thailand. Every day I was repeating myself that the road was very good. The roads were really good, and the roads were very good, but up until now the roads are very nice again. Today was fantastic by the way, I mean the roads were very nice. Which becomes quite boring to you. But for us it meant we got surprised for every day with perfect motorbike road conditions. This is the reason why we got our license just before we started traveling. To me, it always gives you a sense of freedom because you are not bound to public transport or any tour operators. Big and small bikes, it doesn't really matter what you have. The small villages, sometimes beautiful sceneries and good road conditions are made for every type of bike. Thank you for watching. If you think this was a video, give it a like and if you haven't already done so, subscribe for more adventures coming soon.